Well, good morning, everybody. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. I look forward to Sunday mornings. Coming to worship with all of you in the summer where it's it's actually warm out now, too, so that's nice. We don't we can all come in comfortably and try not to sweat. Unless you're like me, I sweat all the time. So <laughs> But anyways, well, let's stand up and worship the Lord this morning. But before we do, let's greet one another and really quick and I want to say welcome back to Brother Larry too. It's good to see his smiling face. The greatest day in history. Death is being you have rescued me. Sing it out, Jesus King of The empty cross, the empty grave. Life eternal, you have won the day. Shout it out, Jesus is alive. Oh, happy day, happy day. 
Thank you. Oh, I didn't know my voice was that loud. Thank you, Fred.
and we're now taking communion this morning. The Lord gave us a warning in here when we do communion that we need to take it seriously. He said, wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you and many sleep. We need to remember that we take communion. We need to examine our heart. If there be any wicked way in us, any sin, habitual sin, anything we're doing, we need to repent of that. That doesn't mean we just do it for now and then we can go back into sin as soon as communion's over. That, with the Lord's help, meaning that we can repent and turn from that sin and not return to it. And if we do not do that, God puts a specific warning to us. We need to be aware. We need to be aware. Communion does not save our souls. Amen? We need to put our trust in Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross alone. That's the only thing we put our trust in, what he did on the cross. Anything other than that, anything, yourself, your church, uh, your tithes, your offering, your good works, don't put your trust in any of it. You put your trust in Jesus Christ and what he accomplished on that cross. Only that when you take communion. Amen? Hallelujah. Are you ready? We've got everybody? Okay. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three 23 through 26. Everybody get your bread in your hand there? The symbol of the broken body. And remember, as we take this now, if you need healing in your body, by Jesus' stripes you are healed. Receive that and believe it. And thank him for it right now. Praise him for it. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it. Let's crush the bread or break it. Take heat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let's partake. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you for what you did on the cross. For your stripes we are healed. For your stripes we are spiritually healed. We can receive salvation. We thank you, Lord. We praise you. We remember it was you that did it for us. Let's take the grape juice as a symbol of the blood of Jesus. After the same manner also he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in rem remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Let's all partake. Jesus, we thank you for that precious blood that was shed on the cross. We thank you for it. We remember that it was because of you and what you did on the cross that we received salvation. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Good morning, Crossfire. We would like to take a moment to welcome any visitors we have with us here this morning. If you are a first timer here at Crossfire, uh, just raise your hand and somebody will get a handout to you. <laughs> we have a handout that uh, has a prayer card in there and there's some information about the church. Uh, here you go, Rick. Thank you, Rick. If you need that, just raise your hand and Rick will get that to you. Well, let's uh, welcome our visitors here this morning. We'd also like to welcome those watching on Facebook this morning and hope you're blessed by the service. And uh, if you can ever come see us in person sometime, please do. We're here every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. 
And a reminder to please silence your cell phones. We don't want any distractions during the service. We would like to wish our brother, Brom Nickrad, a happy birthday. And I'm still older than oh, you. Oh, it's Gabby's birthday, too. Or no. Nicholas. Nicholas. Nicholas is happy birthday, Nicholas. And if you have a prayer request, fill out, please fill out a card on the prayer box in the foyer or submit a request to prayer at cfassembly.com. All requests are prayed for each week. Uh, join us Sunday mornings at 9.30 a.m. in the lodge uh, for uh, intercessory prayer or online Sunday evenings at 6 p.m. via Zoom. I want to just encourage people that we are maintaining that ministry of prayer at this church. Amen. Sunday morning, like Brian just mentioned, but Sunday evening, we have not let up on that. We need to be in prayer in the hour that we live in this world. We need prayer seriously. And if you can be on that, that's encouragement to the other people there. But most of all, we're communicating with our Heavenly Father because this nation needs direction right now. And God is the only one that has the power to change our world the way it is. Complaining doesn't help. Right. Murmuring doesn't help. But prayer helps. Yeah. And that's why we want to encourage prayer again. If you can be on that, please, please try to be on there watching by Facebook. If you can be on prayer, please be on prayer. We need prayer. Yeah. We need to communicate to God our Father. And I want to encourage people with that. Amen? Amen. If you need any information about that, you can send a request to info at cfassembly.com for the link. Can I just also add in there really quick, I know many of you know, but for those of you who are newer, if you want to be on our monthly church newsletter as well too, which has a lot of info about the church, just send a request to info at cfassembly and we can add you to that, um, add that to you the new, to the newsletter as well too. And that also has the links and everything when we have meetings via Zoom. Okay, thank you, Amy. Mm -hmm. The ladies' ministry will be holding a craft bake sale Saturday, June seventeenth, at yeah. from two till five, <laughs> five thirty. <laughs> See Bonnie Lenz or Diana Mansour with questions. And Diana, do you want to come up and talk about that at all, or? to just reach out to the community, but we're asking for Crossfire Assembly to just bake away. And um, so we have a sign-up sheet going around. If you'll sign that up, we also have flyers that uh, as you go out um, of church today, um, take them with you and distribute them so that people know in the community that we're having this. And I think that's it. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Diana. <laughs> and VBS. Yes. <laughs> it's quickly approaching. Uh, registration is now open. VBS week will run from July 24th through the 30th. Grab an application at the information table outside of the sanctuary or sign up online on the church website at www.cfassembly.com and click on the children's tab see Sandra or Terry with questions. And I understand they're also looking for a game coordinator. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested in volunteering for that, talk to Sandra or Terry. And let's, I think that was it. Brian, you're going to get all Yep. <laughs> He's such a gentleman, allow me to interrupt like that, huh? Amen. <laughs> Hey, I, I want to tell you that this church, again, we put another $3,000 worth of Bibles going into Venezuela. And with the Lord's help, we're trying to do that every single month is get the gospel of Jesus Christ out around the world. 
not only in this country and in this city and this area of ministry, but we are literally touching around the world. This church is, along with multitudes of other brothers and sisters in Christ, and these Bibles are dynamite. I mean, they are changing cities and people's lives by getting into the preacher's hands, the teacher's hands, leader's hands, and we, we are just thrilled. This is the most exciting mission thing we can do because you and I cannot go to every nation, can we? How many want to? Oh, not that many. Okay, I got excited. Okay. Uh, but anyway, these Bibles are going there, and they're changing people's hearts and lives for eternity, and one day we will get to meet them. So with the summer months here too, most pastors say that uh, during the summer, tithes go way down because people are out and about, they're doing their thing, and they forget to pay their tithes and their offerings. I want to encourage you, keep the money coming in, not so that I can buy anything. I'm not buying it for me. I'm buying it for missions around the world, and we want to keep those missions yeah. through the summer, especially, again, the hour in we live. The gospel's got to get out, and I believe God is saying time is short. Yeah. Let's do what we can right now, amen? amen? So thank you for your faithfulness because of you that we're able to support these missions. And thank you again. Amen. Before we take the offering, I just want to let uh, the kids know that there's not going to be any Sunday school today, so you'll have to uh, stay in the service. Uh, there will be, the nursery will be open for, for uh, the little ones, but uh, Sunday school, uh, we ask that the kids stay in the sanctuary this morning. So let's take our offering. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, and we thank you and praise you for this day and for this opportunity again to give, and we just ask that you take this offering, Lord, and bless it and use it for your purposes, and, and we just give you all the thanks and praise, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, we're going to just sing a, we've sung this song a couple of times here. We've sung this song a couple of times here, but it's one of our favorites, and we love, just because we love to worship the Lord, and also it's an oldie. Since we've got an official senior citizen here now at 55, 55 we thought, why not sing an older song to honor Brahm, right? Oh, yeah. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, it's always about honoring the Lord, and I'm yes. thankful that Brahm's made it this far, too, because it's been a wonderful life with you, honey. Oh, thanks, honey. <laughs> I'm going to give her a clap, though. I should do that before we sing. I can't stand that.
So listen to our hearts. We praise you, Jesus, for he's worthy of praise. He is worthy of all glory and honor. Hallelujah, Jesus. We lift up your holy name today, Lord. Pastor Lynn. Thank you, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm excited about Jesus. Yeah. I'm excited about Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. That sounds better. We got to get radical for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Lord, we worship you. We praise you, we thank you, we glorify you. You are the mighty God, and you are at move right now in this world. You're preparing and doing a work, Lord, that even man can't see. But Lord, behind the scene, you are preparing a church that will be without spot or wrinkle. And Lord, we thank you for your written word, your anointed word, Lord. Let that anointing fall upon us, the congregation. Father, we may hear and we may be challenged and we may glorify you upon the earth. And we commit this time to you in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen. Is everybody cool? Is everybody lukewarm? Cold or hot? All right. I'd rather be the hot. But the Lord said, yeah, I'd rather have you cold too than lukewarm because, uh, you know, lukewarm Christians make him want to vomit. We got work to do, don't we? <laughs> I do. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm glad you're all here today. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. My message for today is God's beautiful rainbow. As you know, this month is dedicated to Pride Month, which represents the homosexual community. And I want to say up front that we do not hate the homosexual. We do not hate them. We hate the lifestyle that they're doing and forcing upon society. That's the thing that we hate. And I want to tell you that the rainbow I'm going to talk to you about today is a tremendous rainbow. Amen. But you know something? Williams Wadsworth says, was a great lover of the outdoors, and especially of the rainbow. He wrote, my heart leaps up when I behold a rainbow in the sky. So was it when my life began, so is it now I am a man. So be it when I shall grow old or let me die. That's how important a rainbow was to this man. Ezekiel the prophet said, as the appearance of the bow in Ezekiel 128 
as the appearance of the bowl that is in the cloud in the day of the rain, so was the appearance of the brightness round about. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. And when I saw it, I fell upon my face and I heard a voice of one that speaks. We see humility there, don't we? He fell upon his face. No pride, but humility. And we need to realize that when we stand before this holy God, we're probably going to be falling on our face. Huh? No high fives. No high big daddy in the sky. Hey, good buddy, how you doing? None of that, because we're going to see him for who he really is. The mighty God, the holy God, the righteous God, the everlasting I just told a young Mormon guy this week that I was sharing the gospel with. And he, like the Jehovah's Witnesses, believed that Jesus is the brother to Satan. And the reason for that, he said, God created Jesus and he created Satan. And I said, you better show me scripture verses on that. And he couldn't do it. But I could show him scripture verses where Jesus is God, the triune God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, all in one. Where Jesus' name is Everlasting Father, the great I Am. He created everything that we see around us. Everything was created by Jesus. Amen. I told this young man, you better read the Word of God. Right. You better dump the Book of Mormon. You better dump the Great Pearl. What's it called? Yeah, that's it. We don't need that stuff. We need the Word of God. See, the rainbow has been hijacked by the homosexual. Yeah. It's been hijacked. Satan always counterfeits to deceive, to imitate with the intent to defraud. That's the only thing he can do. He can only counterfeit. The homosexual rain, uh, rainbow flag is man-made symbol that is not beautiful. It's polluted. It's polluted. It is not that colorful. It shows no promises, it shows no hope, it shows no dreams, it shows no joy. It is not lasting. It is dirty, it's faded, it's torn. It, it is only a symbol of man's rebellion against a righteous, holy God full of grace and mercy. Did you hear that? Full of grace and mercy. He loves the homosexual. Just love it like he loves the adulterer and the fornicator, but they need to repent. He loves the thief. He loves the liar. He loves them all. But they would have to repent and turn from their wicked way. And God has called us to warn the wicked in their sin, lest their blood be on our hands. And we will stand against, we will stand against this movement in the name of Jesus Christ. Christians, it's time to rise up. It's time to rise up and stand for what you believe and not be like these corporations that are go falling in to their deceit. Amen. We need to be brave. We need to be bold as lions and we need to be loving and caring. And our love is showing the homosexual community that they need Jesus Christ. Amen. They need him. Their flag is based on self-pride. That's what it's based on. And that's why Satan got thrown out of heaven, because of pride. The homosexual flag represents unnatural perversion, leading to other forms of sexual perversion, sickness, disease, loneliness, rejection, separation, heartache, hatred, deception, Satan worship, witchcraft. It represents severe judgment and finally death and an eternal hell. That's what that flag means today by the homosexual. That's what it really truly means. There's no gaiety about that. They hijack the word gay. There's nothing gay about that. It's destruction, destroying human souls for all eternity. Yeah. I, only our creator can create an original, beautiful, colorful rainbow. Amen. Only our creator. And, and think about it. Our creator creates it so that it goes throughout the whole sky. The whole sky. And by doing that, he's using refraction, things that he created, 
refraction of sunlight in falling water droplets reflecting a light from the back of that droplet. Our creator created everything within the universe. He's able to do that. Think how creative he is to make his rainbow. But his rainbow has a beautiful purpose. It's got a beautiful purpose. The rainbow created by God of the Bible gives us promise. Amen? Amen. When you look at the rainbow in the sky, there's promises behind that rainbow. The one that you're seeing that's promoted over TV, the internet, and whatever today is hell on fire. It's destroying lives, multitudes, young people falling into it by deception, trying it out, seeing if it's whatever. But God's rainbow is a promise for the future. Why has the homosexual movement hijacked the rainbow? The answer is simple. The rainbow speaks of Jesus Christ. It speaks of Jesus Christ. Homosexual community hates Jesus Christ. It's demonic inspired. Now, I'm not talking about the homosexual who is struggling so hard and they want to escape, that they want to be freed from it, set free from the bondage of it, and they're crying out, and we have the answer. But the ones who are both feet solid on the ground with their fist in the air mocking Jesus Christ, they hate him. They hate him. That's why they hijacked the rainbow. The apostle John saw in heaven the most amazing rainbow on record, the only permanent rainbow that exists today. And it's never going to fade away, that one. It's never going to fade away. I have a message for everyone in the homosexual. I have a message for you. This scripture verse tells us of this beautiful rainbow is elegant representation of both divine judgment and mercy in judgment that was first seen above the emerald throne and the one who sat upon that throne in heaven. The scripture tells us near the very middle of the tribulation, Jesus descends to the earth and the rainbow is still above his head as a glorious crown. Am I making that up? Revelation 10.1. And I saw another mighty angel. And this is no other than Jesus Christ himself when you study it. Come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head. And his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as the pillars of fire. That's describing Jesus. Did you hear that? That rainbow was over him. His rainbow the beautiful rainbow represents Jesus Christ himself. It would appear the rainbow John saw was a complete circle, by the way, also. It went all the way around the throne of God, this rainbow did. Listen to Revelation 4, 3. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne in the sight onto an emerald. Can you see that picture? Our Lord sitting on the throne, surrounded by a rainbow, the whole thing. He's got a rainbow surround. That's why Satan is using the rainbow today, because our creator, our God, is sitting up on the throne, an emerald throne surrounded by a beautiful rainbow that surrounds him. Right. I'm excited. We're going to see him one day. We're going to see that rainbow, and we're going to see what the rainbow really, truly means. Right now, it's disgust, but in heaven, it's going to be praise and worship. And I, my prayer is that the homosexual, that there will be a wave of revival amongst the homosexual community, and they'll come to know Jesus, and they one day will join us in heaven as the blood of Jesus washes them. See, we see the rainbow cut in half because we cannot see below the horizon where the other half is. We can only see the top part. But John, he saw the whole thing circle heaven. He saw the whole thing. That had to be beautiful, amen? What a sight that John was privileged to see. It had to be one of the most beautiful sights human eyes have ever seen. See, God is able to... He, he, he's, there's no artist like him. What can you say? 
And, and the rainbow that we're going to see in heaven is so spectacular, there's really no human words that will describe it. It really won't. We serve a mighty God. Each time it is associated with God. Listen, every time you see about the rainbow in Scripture, it is associated with the time of judgment upon the earth, but also associated with mercy and grace during the times of judgment. He's a merciful God. He did not come into the world to judge and to condemn anyone. He came into the world to save the sinner, which you and I were part of. The person, Berghill Dahl, in her book, wrote a book called I Wanted to See. It tells of being blind for nearly half a century. At age 52, she had surgery at Mayo Clinic and could see 40 times more. She found it a thrill to wash dishes after that. <laughs> I didn't hear any boos, praise the Lord. Here is her testimony. I begin to play with white fluffy suds in the dishpan. I dip my hands into them and I pick up a ball of tiny soap bubbles. I behold them up to the light and each of them I can see the brilliant colors of a miniature rainbow. She thanks God as she washes dishes for the simple pleasure of seeing rainbows while she washes dishes. How many things do we take for granted in life? And this woman was praising God for washing dishes, seeing the beauty of God in it. Hallelujah. How does a rainbow remind us of Christ? First, his beauty. There aren't many more beautiful sights in nature than a rainbow. They're beautiful when they see them and they're brilliant. But Christ is beautiful. The Song of Solomon says in uh, five, chapter 5, verse 16, it says, His mouth is most sweet. Yea, he is altogether lovely. This is my beloved and this is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. In the days of his flesh, it says in Psalms 52, or excuse me, 45, verse 2. Thou art fairer than the children of men. Grace is poured into thy lips. Therefore, God has blessed thee forever. That describes a merciful and loving and beautiful God. Altogether lovely. There's a song, I think, called that, isn't there? Altogether lovely. In his humanity, he was altogether lovely with no fault in him. And so will he be throughout eternity to all who love him. But all who reject or ignore him will one day cry out in vain. Revelation 6.16 And said to the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Those today that are marching in pride and the, the, the flag today, the pride flag, lest they repent. One day they will run and hide and ask the mountains to fall upon them to hide them from what's coming upon them. I'm the very one that you and I can come before and worship and praise him and glorify and they will run from him out of fear that they've never felt ever before when they see the wrath of the Lamb. But all who reject or ignore him, the beauty of his words, it says in John 7, 46, the officers answered, never man spake like this man. Why? In scripture, he's called the wonderful counselor. Do you need counseling today? You need to go to the word of God and you need to talk to Jesus. Do you need deliverance and counseling today? It's right here. It's right here. I don't have to run to man. I can run to Jesus. He's the wonderful counselor. He has got words in here that if I'm troubled mentally, physically, spiritually, Jesus has put his word within here, and it's a living word, and it's life, and it will come to light when you be, apply it to your life. He will bring you back to where you need to be. He's the wonderful counselor. He's a wonder, not just a counselor. He's a wonderful counselor. Isaiah 9, 6 tells us that. And then in Luke 4.32, it said his word was with power. When Jesus spoke, things changed real quick. 
Lives change, circumstances change when Jesus spoke his word. And when you and I, through the power of the Holy Spirit, speak his name, speak his word, there's power there when we do it in faith. Amen? I want to just segue a little bit to my brother Larry here. Larry Smith. He's, I think, the fifth time now you're supposed to be dead. And here he is. I visited him, didn't I? Didn't have a whole lot of hope, but I tell you what, I told him, I said, God's not done with you yet, and here's that brother sitting in church. Because, see, God's word is with power, and he's got the last word. You can mock Jesus all you want, world, but I tell you what, it won't do you any good. You're in trouble. His word is with power when we walk in faith and speak it in faith. And I thank God for my brother that God has chosen to give him some more days. None of us know how many, but he's here today. Rejoice, for this is the day that the Lord... Now, I know it's been a struggle. And I know he's felt lonely by himself through this struggle. But I tell you what, in spite of it all, God's doing something in him for all eternity, as he is in you and I. Amen? I'd get excited about Jesus if I were you. We serve a mighty God. Hallelujah. The beauty of his works. Matthew 13, 54, and when he was come into his own country, he taught them in their synagogues insomuch that they were astonished and said, whence has this man this wisdom and these mighty works? That's our Jesus they were talking about. Where did he get all this wisdom and this power to do these mighty works? The beauty of his wounds. The beauty of his wounds. Wounded for me, wounded for me. There on the cross he was wounded for me. Gone by transgressions and now I am free. All because Jesus was wounded for me. The blood. The beauty of the blood. I'm describing Jesus. He's our rainbow. Hallelujah. The red of the rainbow reminds us of our Savior's blood. Rainbows always come in pairs. Did you know that? They always come in pairs. We usually only see one at a time. But there's another one hiding. The one we can see is called the primary rainbow, the brilliant one. The one we can't see is called the secondary rainbow. The primary rainbow you, you usually see, and I'm going to tell you the colors that they come in order. From the top, the primary to the bottom are red. Excuse me. The colors of the rainbow in order from top to bottom are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, and some even list indigo as part of the color between the blue and the violet. But the top one, again, I remind you, is red. The secondary rainbow, the less common one, the double one, the colors in order are violet, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. Just the opposite. But you notice the bottom one is red. The primary rainbow is red at the top. This teaches us that when God looks on his redeemed people, he sees the blood of Christ covering. He sees the blood. The secondary rainbow is red at the bottom. This teaches us that we can look up with the eyes of our mind at the blood covering us and be comforted. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Right. Hallelujah. See, God sees the blood and he's satisfied. He's satisfied. Man sees the blood and we are soothed. We are comforted because of the washing and the cleansing of that precious blood. And we see that when we can look at the rainbow, we see the blood at the top and we can see the blood at the bottom. It's in the sky. It's Jesus. We can see him in the rainbow. He's there. It's around his throne. It's part of his glory. 
It's in his word, God's precious word. It stands forever. Hallelujah. When I, the Lord, see the blood, I will pass over you. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. And then the, it's like a barrier. Sometimes because of the clouds, we can only see half of the rainbow. Sometimes the nearness of Christ's presence is not felt as much as we would like it. Amen? Amen. When we feel empty, when we feel alone, when we feel nobody cares and we don't even sense God around us, it's like that rainbow. Sometimes we don't see it or feel it. But he's there. The clouds of disobedience. The clouds of disobedience, of discouragement, and disease come between us and our beloved. Isaiah 54, 8 says, In a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness I will have mercy on thee, saith the Lord thy Redeemer. With everlasting kindness. Hallelujah. Little poem here. What though clouds are hovering over me, and I seem to walk alone, long amid my cares and crosses for the joys that are now flowing. If I've Jesus, Jesus only, then my sky will have a gem. He's the sun of brightness, splendor, and the star of Bethlehem. Beautiful poem. Talks of our Lord. And then when you see the bow, the rainbow, a rainbow is really a bow without an arrow. It speaks of an entrance, an entrance. John 10, 9 says, I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. That's the arch. It's the door. Way to Jesus. Amen? Amen. See, we're still in the day of grace, people. We are still in the day of grace. Sinner, homosexual, adulterer, fornicator, thief, liar. We're still in the day of grace and mercy. Hallelujah. You can still be saved if you surrender to Jesus Christ when you repent. If you've never done that, you're missing what a great God it is that will save your soul for all eternity. All because Jesus wounded was wounded for me. I can come to him and cry out. See, the rainbow is also a universal symbol. Genesis chapter 9, verses 12 and 16. Listen to this now. You remember the story of Noah, right? Okay. And God said, this is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you. And every, say every, every. living, living. Creature, creature that is with you for a perpetual generation. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. Just the opposite, the pride flag that we see today. It comes and it brings destruction into the home, into the lives of our young people, even our older people. It brings destruction. But God's, it's a promise. The rainbow is something that man has in common with the animal kingdom, by the way, too. The only thing. It is the only symbol that links us with the animal kingdom is the rainbow. Because I just read it to you right here. Everything that has flesh. Revelation chapter 4, verses 1 and 11. And this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show these things which must be hereafter. Sounds like the rapture. And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one that sat up on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like jasper and sardine stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne in the sight like unto an emerald. 
And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And up on the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white remnant, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the thrones of there was a sea of glass like unto crystal, and in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf, and the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were all full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Hallelujah. That's the one that we're going to be standing before one day. What an incredible sight that John was given to see. Can you see the thunders and the lightning? There had to be rainbow. There was because the rainbow was all around the throne. Think about this. The rainbow around the throne is assurance that God wins. For he does not need to ride out the storms of life. He, doesn't, he already lives on the victory side. When we serve and live for Jesus, we live on the victory side. He doesn't worry about the storms. When you and I are in the storms, we can look to him and we can remember the rainbow, the promise. He lives encircled by that rainbow. I just read it to you. He lives encircled by it all around the rainbow. It's his promise from heaven. And those who trust in him will end up on the right side of victory. Praise the Lord. You know, it takes work to live for Jesus day after day, doesn't it? Work out your own salvation. Don't compromise. Stand true. And God will keep sending that rainbow in the sky to remember that he is alive. He sees. And his promises are right before us. He shows us frequently. Just turn on your sprinkler system at home and he'll show you his rainbow. He lives enriched by the rainbow. The sign of storms end. Your storm will end. Did you hear that? Your storm will end. There will come an end to it. Praise God! It's going to end one day. And those who trust him will end up on the right side by his mercy and his grace. Glory to God. Pastor Richard Wong of Honolulu has written a book, Prayers from an Island. And in it, he has this prayer about the rainbow. O God, thou hast a merry way when thou hangest rainbows in rain. So may we learn that life's secrets are hidden, joy embedded in pain, wisdom gleaming through suffering, strength glowing through hardships, and fulfillments beckoning through problems. Teach us always to look through rain to find rainbows glistening. Amen. Amen. When you're walking through the storms of life, look through that storm and realize there's a rainbow. There's a promise. Amen? Amen. What a rainbow. Hallelujah. God looks and remembers his covenant, and we need to look and remember as well. The rainbow reminds us to be an optimist. No matter how great the storm is in our life, we need to be optimists. We need to begin to think God's thoughts because of the rainbow. Brandon Manning, a public speaker, I did a little research on him and a man who's walked through a lot of storms in life, but one thing I appreciated about him, he lived in sin. He talked about, not in depth and in detail, the sin. He just touched on it and talked how he at one time, as a young man, lived in sin and the different things that happened to him. But he was honest and truthful about it. He became a public speaker. He said, Father, you must have known I was feeling like the day 
dull, gray, dismal, with a tendency to thunderstorms. And so you flung a rainbow across the sky and whispered coaxingly in my ear, look at what I've made just for you. And as I looked and wondered and marveled what really took my breath away, it wasn't the splendor of the creation, but the breathtaking, mind-boggling, heart-stopping realization that I am pampered, that I am cherished, child, indulged, highly favored, given all, Father. Thank you you for the love that made the rainbow just for me. And Father, make me like your rainbow. Let me reflect the spectrum of your love. Isn't that beautiful? That's what God is working to do in you and I, to reflect that rainbow to a dead world. A world full of heartache and pain, and we can be that rainbow reflecting God's love and God's promises to them. So in conclusion, I'll cut it short here. Isaiah 54, 10, for the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord that has mercy on thee. Glory to God. See, God is ever the God of mercy. Aren't you glad? And this is why we need to keep us on things above and say with the poet, I need thee, blessed Jesus, and hope to see thee soon, encircled with the rainbow and seated on the throne. There with thy blood-bought children, my joy shall ever be, to sing the praise of the Lord Jesus, to gaze my Lord on thee. Another great poem, amen? And this is very appropriate that the Son of God and the rainbow be linked together as one. For that, just as Jesus is our intercessor and our mediator between God, so the rainbow is ever pleading before his throne for mercy. Every time we see that rainbow. The rainbow, like Jesus, is a great friend of sinners, by the way. Jesus is the one who gives meaning to this beautiful symbol that we see. And only if we trust in our Lord and Jesus will we enjoy with him forever. Around the throne of God, this remarkable rainbow, we will be with him for eternity to see it. People, this is why Satan has hijacked the rainbow, to use, to deceive the masses, and to prevent us from seeing this beautiful rainbow that's around the throne of God. Let us go to Scripture and learn about the true meaning and purpose of the rainbow. That's where you'll find the truth about the rainbow. If anyone approaches you because of that rainbow that's being flaunted deceptively, a false deceptive rainbow that we're seeing in the market today, take that opportunity and say, can I tell you about the rainbow in the Word of God? Can I tell you about the one that's in the sky that everyone can see that has nothing to do with sex, that has nothing to do with pain, destruction, disease, hopelessness, suicide, that, flat, that rainbow is a rainbow of promise of life and joy and peace and love and kindness and mercy. That's the rainbow that God created, not that fake one that you see painted upon the marketing across companies and up on the media today. Tell them about Jesus, amen? Let's all stand. Is there going to be a song? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I want to I wanna do this right now. I want to quickly, again, if anyone has walked in here this morning and you've never given your life to Jesus, this is an invitation I tell you about right now. That Jesus said, all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There are none righteous, not one. Don't, you that come here regularly, don't, don't ever, ever get bored of hearing that. Don't ever take it for granted. Just like the lady who washed the dishes, she was thanking God being able to wash the dishes. We need to thank God for washing the dishes. We need to thank God that his word is his word because it's a warning even to you and I. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God and there are none righteous, no, not one. The wages of death is separation from almighty God for all eternity. But God is calling anyone in here this morning. If you walked in, 
and you've never given your life to Jesus and you need salvation, you know that if you should die, you would go to be with Jesus. Just raise up your hand. Just slip it up. Just say, I want to know this Jesus. I want to know this Jesus that I'm going to, that, that's sitting in the throne with the rainbow around him. Is there anyone in here this morning? Is anyone in here that walked in this morning? This may be your last chance ever to receive him as Lord. Salvation is the most important thing. His mercy and grace. Jesus said to Nicodemus, a religious leader, ye must be born again. That's what Jesus said. Ye must be born again. If you don't know if you are, just slip up your hand. Is there anybody? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Church, how many know that this is a time when we need to stand in boldness right now, in Holy Ghost boldness? We need to get on fire for Jesus. We need to be sharing the gospel. There's a world out there going to hell, literally. And it's being forced upon us right now. And how many here say, I need more Holy Ghost boldness this morning? Raise up your hand. Come on. Come on. I need more Holy Ghost boldness. I need to speak the word of God boldly in love and mercy and kindness. I need to come forth and begin to speak it out. I need to do that. God will give that to you. You know when he gives you the boldness? Not when you're standing here saying, oh God, give me boldness, give me boldness, give me boldness. No, he gives you boldness when you step out and say, do you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? He cares and loves about you. Would you like to hear about him? All right, I'm going to tell you later. Just like I did the Mormon the other day. I approached him. And open a conversation, and his heart was wide open, and I went through some great things with this man. But we've got to do it continually, people. I'm not saying that to any accolades. I'm saying it because there's a hurting world. There's a deceived world right now. Heavenly Father, you saw the hands go up this morning. Lord, I'm praying even today that you will give some of us, if not all of us, an opportunity to call a loved one, to call a family member, maybe a family member that's living in homosexuality and share the gospel with them in love and kindness and mercy. Lord, maybe there's someone else, Father, that we need to be talking to or writing a letter to or emailing and sharing the gospel and beginning to use what you've given us because you told us to go in to all the world. Lord, put that in the hearts of your people this morning. Let it be Holy Ghost boldness, Father, that we step out, that we be a church on mission, on a mission to reach the lost and not afraid to preach the word of God. For we are not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God on the salvation. And Lord, use us as a mighty church in this end time, Father, to reach our Jerusalem, the people around us. And we thank you, Father. And Lord, I just pray that you'll do a work in me and each one of us within this building, Lord, that we will have an impact in our world around us. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Lord bless you. Have a great, nice, warm day. Stay on fire for Jesus. It's going to be hot. Look at somebody and say... I hope I see a rainbow. The one from heaven. Lord bless you. Have some good fellowship and you need prayer, you got anything? I'm up here for a little bit. Feel free.
Christmas time.